Hello and a good time of day to you. You might know that a while ago I repaired an Hitachi amplifier. There are a couple of videos about that if you want to know more. I use that quite regularly and it's still in working order. So I thought it would be nice to have this to go with it, even though it's not something I expect I'll use very often. When I first got it, it uh, wasn't working very well at all and was very dirty. After some extensive cleaning and replacing some of the drive belts, it now works reasonably well. But there's still a problem, and that problem is that it tends to chew up some cassette tapes, only some, others play perfectly well. And in particular, this occurs because while it's playing, the tape works its way off the front edge of the pinch roller. Now, this can sometimes be caused by the take-up spool running too slowly, and in fact, after replacing the drive belts that operate that, the situation improved, but there's still a problem. This can also be caused by a worn or dirty pinch roller. I've cleaned it very extensively, and it doesn't look particularly worn out, so I imagine it is fairly old. So I want to try to accurately measure the pinch roller and see whether I can obtain an appropriate replacement. So hopefully that will solve the problem. I'm making this video as a reminder to myself, and perhaps it would be helpful to others, about how to dismantle this. Like many things, it's quite easy once one knows how, but the first time I tried it, it took me quite a long time to work out the correct sequence. I'll start by opening the cassette door and uh, sliding the outer part of the door up and off its plastic support. Now the inner door be can be closed. Inc incidentally, should you want to remove the transparent plastic part of this of the door cover to clean between the two, then these pins can be pushed out from the rear and the two parts will separate. One should push in the plastic tabs Next, I'll turn the whole unit upside down. And remove the three screws from the front. If you've got one of these and you should wish to access the underside of the circuit board without completely dismantling it, then it may be useful to know that once the outside case has been removed, then undoing this single screw here allows this metal plate to be taken off and that gives access to the underside of the circuit board. Now there are four more screws to undo. The ones at either end are black screws and screw into the side plastic supports. And these two fix the cassette mechanism, mechanism to the front panel. The front panel can now be taken off. If you should want then these two separate knobs can be pulled off. It doesn't take any more than pulling them, although they can be stuck on quite firmly. And then a nut underneath can be undone and the potentiometer removed to free this. But for now, I'm just going to put this to one side. 
something to be aware of is that the on-off switch, this thing here, which is an illuminated on-off switch, is just a, a long plastic extender which operates the real switch at the back here. And once the front panel is removed, there's nothing at the front to support it, and so it can easily break off. And that's happened to this one here. I've left it for now, but I'm sure it will be possible to glue it back in position, and that won't be a serious problem. The entire cassette mechanism assembly is held to the plastic base by three screws. The cables over here look a bit messy because they were previously tied up neatly with some cable ties, but I cut those so that I'd be able to have more freedom to move this. This entire mechanism is now loose and can be lifted up. Before dismantling it any further, I'll pause to point out the various drive belts that may need replacing when servicing one of these. This motor here drives the take-up spools via two belts, this one here and another one here around this central pulley. There's then another belt, which is very difficult to see, but it's down in here and it connects the right-hand take-up spool across to the tape counter over here. To get to that, it's necessary to remove this screw and loosen another one in here and remove this metal plate. If this belt is slipping or broken, then the player won't operate correctly, and that's because attached to the counter shaft is a rotating magnet, and adjacent to that on a small circuit board on the side, there's a reed relay. The control electronics use that to determine whether or not the right-hand take-up spool is rotating, and if it uh, detects it isn't, then it assumes the cassette tape has reached its end, and so it turns off the mechanism. This larger motor here drives the capstan, and it runs all the time that the unit's powered on. It drives a large flywheel down here via a flat belt, I've replaced all of the belts other than the capstan drive belt because I haven't got one of the right type, but of course I, I will try to obtain one and replace that as well. The control button circuit board and its plastic mount can be unclipped by pushing up the plastic latches from behind. Now that may be far enough for me to be able to remove the pinch roller. I'm not quite sure how to do that as I haven't taken it off before, but I am going to remove the remainder part of the door cover because I think that'll make it easier for me to get at everything. This can be gently levered off its hinges at either side. The door will remain attached by this spring on the right hand side and it's necessary to unhook that from the hole in the door that it passes through. That proved to be a bit tricky, more difficult than I remember reassembling it being. It's also necessary to unhook one more thing. And that's this little arm here, and all that does is to allow the door to open slowly when the eject button is pressed, rather than flying open all in one go because of this spring. Here's the pinch roller. 
Unfortunately, I had to slightly bend the bracket it was mounted in to remove it. On close inspection, I can see the surface of the roller that holds the tape against the capstan isn't perfectly flat. It bulges slightly in the middle. I think it's very likely this is the cause of the tape chewing problems. I've measured it. The diameter of the whole roller is 13 millimeters, and it's 8.5 millimeters wide with a 2.5 millimeter diameter hole through the middle. These measurements closely match an easily available replacement, so I'll install one of those to see whether it cures the problem. As you can see, it's back together. The new pinch roller helped greatly, but it still had a tendency to chew up just a few cassettes. After making many adjustments, by slightly bending the sides of the bracket that holds the pinch roller spindle to make sure the pinch roller presses evenly on the capstan across its width, the problem seems to be solved. If you remove the pinch roller from one of these, pay very careful attention to the position of the spring underneath it before you lift off the bracket. The spring will fit back in a few positions, several of which will function to some extent, but only one works reliably. I've also replaced the capstan drive belt with a new one, though the original appeared to be in reasonable condition. To do this, it's necessary to remove the metal piece at the rear of the mechanism that the two motors are attached to. I've made some tests by recording and playing back some pure tones. These indicate the speed stability of the mechanism isn't as good as it could be, and probably not as good as it once was, but it isn't too bad. Apart from that, it seems to work well. It will be handy to have a copy of the service manual for this unit, but I haven't been able to find one, so please get in touch if you've got a copy.